What's going on guys? It's Crypto Lark here from Wellington. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, doing the weekly news roundup, looking at all the different legislations and dramas and positive news going on with Bitcoin around the world. Now before we get into that, we have to give a quick shout out to everyone who has been hitting that like button, everyone who's hitting the subscribe button down below. It's just right there. Go ahead and hit it up if you're not subscribed to the channel already to stay in tune with all the things that are happening in the crypto sphere. And of course, big shout out to George, the latest patron over on Patreon. Much appreciate the support. And if you'd like to become a patron over on Patreon as well, links just down below. You can also follow me along at steamit.com. Now, quick disclaimer also, guys, this is not professional financial advice. You guys know that. This is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies. Let's start with Bitcoin. Good place for a Bitcoin video. Bitcoin's at $5,722.64 today. We have seen some retraction from that all-time price high of about $5,835, $36 I think it was, which was absolutely stunning. Now, even though some Bitcoins did sell for over $6,000 on some pairings on some exchanges, that was the average price. We are still not officially at that $6,000 USD ceiling yet but it's coming it's coming bitcoin is definitely moving in the right direction now we are about eight days away from the bitcoin gold chain split so make sure of course that you have your bitcoin sitting in the appropriate place if you would like to take advantage of that when it comes you must be in control of your private keys or have it on an exchange where they have advertised that they'll be supporting bitcoin gold over in difficulty news, we've seen some recent spikes in difficulty, but nothing too serious. Now we had this one here, and this was a 20% spike in difficulty approximately. Mind-blowingly huge. That, of course, was a lot of pent-up difficulty, which had been bottling up due to what happened with Bitcoin Cash and all that back around here. So the recent jumps in difficulty have been relatively small, which is good. Nice little positive traces moving forward, which is great. Moving on, continued concerns about the ridiculous amounts of energy required to send a single Bitcoin continue. Now this is just an article uh, from Business Insider Australia, but people are finding out about this. This is a really interesting one, a Dutch bank has been complaining about how much electricity Bitcoin uses, but damn it, they're not wrong. And this is one thing that as a community, we keep kind of ignoring. And I know I've done videos about it before, but it can't continue like this. 200 kilowatts for a Bitcoin transaction, 37 kilowatts for an Ethereum transaction, and 0 0.01 kilowatts for a credit card transaction. We need to get that down, guys. Mining and miners, as much as I like mining, is not the way of the future. Proof of stake systems, things like IOTA, are gonna be what move all this technology forward. As much as I love Bitcoin, this is something that we seriously have to address. If Bitcoin were to be adopted as a global currency, there is predictions that it could use up to as much as 60% of global energy at current rates. Mind-blowing, of course, we have to get more green energy involved in Bitcoin mining. It's unacceptable that most of the Bitcoin mining currently is happening in China, where they're using coal-fired power plants. Not cool, of course. Thankfully, uh, Japan, for example, Japanese power companies have been coming out saying you can buy renewable energy at fixed rates for Bitcoin mining, so that's definitely the way forward. Obviously, we have to see that the big companies that are going to start Bitcoin mining next year, if they start using renewable energy, that will be a really, really good thing. And obviously, we'll have to see what the Russians decide to do with their Russian mining uh, farm as well, whether or not they're just going to stick that next to a nuclear power plant, uh, as has been advertised in St. Petersburg, or if they will put that next to a hydroelectric dam, which would be, of course, be much, much better. Time will tell, of course, but it is something we need to think about as a community moving forward. 
Great news over in Australia. Australia, what's up guys? Australia. Bitcoin adoption increases following like regulatory amendments. Australia has been proving itself to be a fantastic adopter of Bitcoin. The government largely saying, we're gonna get out of the way. Here's some common sense legislation so we're not double taxing and all that stuff. Have at it guys. That's great. Really, really positive stuff to see. Now the Australian market for Bitcoin is still relatively small. Now this is from a Sydney-based Bitcoin exchange, the Independent Reserve. They say they're getting between 100 and 200 new customers every day. And that they're now doing about 4 million Australian dollars daily in Bitcoin transactions. You, you might think, gosh, Lark, that's not very much. Well, it is and it isn't. You gotta remember, there's only 24 million people in Australia and that's just one exchange in Australia. How many Australians are using international exchanges as well? So it's really, really good to see this happening. I think that Australia can position itself as a very good player in the crypto space. Obviously, there's a lot of great minds in Australia. And there's, you know, of course, we've had Power Ledger recently come out of Australia. So keep, keep it classy, Australia. I'm, I'm really liking that. That's great. Over in South Korea, they are preparing to tax Bitcoin use. I think we'll see more and more of this, obviously. One thing is how are they going to do that? Now they haven't exactly decided. They're still saying, well, is it gonna be a value added tax? Is it gonna be a capital gains tax? They haven't figured out how they're gonna do it, but they're gonna do it. So tax is coming to an exchange near you in Korea. If you're in Korea, that is of course. Privacy coins in light of this will continue to increase in popularity. Watch out for PIVX guys. It's been doing really well. Over on Microsoft, you can now add money to your Microsoft account with Bitcoin. Very nice. Didn't get a lot of news in the press or it hit the news cycle and moved out very quickly, but that's really good. It shows that, you know, it is getting bigger support. Cool. I like it. Over in Sweden, Sweden, the government is going to sell seized Bitcoin in an open auction. Hmm. Interesting. Now they're not selling very much Bitcoin. It's only 0.6 Bitcoin, but it is a, uh, a first for Sweden in that way. Obviously this is nothing compared to what happened when they sold, oh gosh, I can't remember how many Bitcoin it was, but thousands of Bitcoin to a wall street investor. And he got them at I think $600 a piece and has now made, of course, gigantic gains off of that. But nevertheless, interesting news. Okay, Jamaican police target human traffickers operating with Bitcoin. Now look, in all of the Bitcoin stories that I do, this is really, really, really a minority. Drugs, human trafficking, and all of this stuff is, of course, absolutely mind-blowingly horrendous and terrible. But anytime it happens, they like to talk about it and say, see, see, I told you, it's Bitcoin's fault. Bitcoin is the one trafficking humans. Bitcoin is the one chaining girls up in, you know, bedrooms and letting people come and sleep with them all day. You know, it's Bitcoin who's, you know, in charge of slavery. Bitcoin's running the drugs. It's crazy. It's crazy. The fact that this stuff even makes news, it's like, okay, you catch human traffickers with US dollars and it's like, no one, no one talks about that. No one says, you know, human traffickers caught with US dollars. Um, US dollars are now responsible for crime. Nobody talks like that. It's crazy. But when it's Bitcoin, well, then it becomes relevant. Interesting. Over in Nepal, seven people have been arrested for trading Bitcoin. <sighs> Sorry to hear that, guys. Sorry to hear that, but thank, good, good on these guys. They are part pioneers of their time, you know, trying to uh, sell Bitcoin in a country where it's illegal to sell Bitcoin. That sucks, though. That sucks, though. It's just so disappointing to see these countries where Bitcoin is illegal or you get arrested for trading Bitcoin, you get arrested for mining Bitcoin. Some of these countries are so desperately behind the times sad one 
Speaking of countries that are ahead of the times, though, Switzerland. Zug. Let's put this in map here. Uh, put this in the map here so you guys can see and put this in perspective. By the way, right there, wham bam, center of Switzerland, basically, not too far away from Zurich. Of course, big banking town Zurich. Zug, Zug. I hope I'm saying that right. Is making itself the uh, crypto capital of Europe by um, basically. If you guys don't know what happened in Switzerland a couple of years ago. Its banking secrecy laws had to be relaxed a little bit. There was lots of scandals of different French ministers who had been, you know, staking money over in um, Switzerland and all kinds of stuff came out, unfortunately. And Switzerland kind of lost a bit of its competitive edge in that sense. But they might be trying to gain that edge back a little bit by getting crypto companies to come and register. And apparently Zug is absolutely taking off with lots of different crypto companies registering headquarters there. Cool, I like it, Switzerland. Let's let's see it ha keep happening. And hopefully Switzerland doesn't do what they did with their banking secrecy laws, of course, even though in the end, there was a lot of positive stuff that came out of that. Obviously, so many ministers which had been stealing money and all these things came out. If it can be done, again, in a positive way, invite the companies in, give them sweet tax breaks, let them run their businesses, don't interfere. You'll have a good time in Switzerland. Over in China, they had a government-backed conference and they called Bitcoin a disaster. I just feel like that that government-backed Chinese conference would be everyone sitting around looking at each other like, are we supposed to attack Bitcoin now? Yes. I really don't like Bitcoin. Yeah, I also don't like Bitcoin. Yeah, me too. I really just like Bitcoin too. It's a disaster. Whatever, China. Whatever, China. The world's just going to keep moving on. Bitcoin didn't care, man. Bitcoin over in the Philippines. Central bank official calls Bitcoin fast, near, real-time, and convenient. Well, near real-time. Near. Could be an exaggeration. You're waiting for like 45 minutes or an hour for a transaction to process. But uh, nevertheless... Nevertheless, it is certainly not super slow, especially if you compare it to something like uh, international remittances. The Philippines, are, of course, a country which is a great case use for cryptocurrencies. The Philippines has a huge percentage of their population who live abroad, who send money home to their families. Projects like Omise Go are targeting these people projects all across the crypto space can really help set these people free from the international remittance agencies which have been charging terribly huge fees and look i'm sure they'll bring their fees down and they'll try and adopt you know blockchain technology dealing with these legacy companies that have billions of dollars at their disposal is tough without a doubt but there are definitely some crypto companies that are going to be able to compete with this and it's nice to see the Philippines central bank official come out and say, guys, we're, we're, we're cool with it. We're cool with it. We don't, we don't mind seeing what Bitcoin's doing. Nice. As opposed to Brazil, where over in Brazil, they say Bitcoin is a bubble, says the central bank chief. Yet another central banker who doesn't really know what the heck is going on. The next couple stories here are sort of back and forth on that. This guy, Schiller, why does anyone keep talking to this guy? I only report on him because his name's funny. But a lot of people keep coming out every time it hits its all-time high and say, it's a fad. You're going to lose all your money. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. I just don't get it. I just don't get these guys. Anyway, Ben Bernanke, that guy for some reason. Some people wanted to listen to what this guy had to say. Of course, he was at the Ripple conference when he said this stuff, so take that in context that he was at a conference promoting Ripple and attacking Bitcoin at the same time. Keep it classy, Ben. Keep it classy. Holy cow, that guy. Okay. Bitcoin's market value is now larger than Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. Whew. Wowzers. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. It's getting big, guys. It is getting big. Now, that's not combined, of course. That is uh, each taken individually. But wow, 
Bitcoin is getting really, really big, guys. Really, really big. Of course, we're almost at the uh, the hundred billion dollar market cap for Bitcoin. It's getting pretty gosh darn close. Ninety five billion at the moment today. It's gonna come when we hit six thousand. It will be a hundred billion dollar market cap. All the naysayers, all the doubters, everyone who keeps saying it's a fad, it's gonna go away. Not, they don't know what they're talking about. And of course, uh, to be fair to Goldman Sachs, they at least came out and said that they're looking at, you know, getting involved. We're gonna get involved. Bank of America releases probably what is the most common sense report that I can see. The true value of Bitcoin is impossible to assess. You guys know I'm always saying this. People come out and say, hey, Lark, what's your... Uh, What's your prediction for Bitcoin? Here's a number. It's impossible, guys. It's impossible. The market's completely irrational. Technical analysis can give you some feeling on what's going to go on, but then Bitcoin just does what it wants, kind of doesn't really care about. These traditional ways of trying to predict markets still works to an extent, of course. All of the predictions, this is the thing, enough people come out and make a prediction, someone's going to be right. But I think that this is an important report, actually, because the true value is impossible to assess. We're at a hundred bill, almost at a hundred billion dollars now, and it's only going up here from here, guys. Are there going to be bumps on the way? You bet your bottom dollar there's going to be bumps along the way. It's not going to be a bull market forever. We might even get into a long-term bear market at some point where we see three, four, five, six months of Bitcoin just chilling. Could happen guys it could happen i don't feel like it's going to happen anytime soon though there's so much interest so much new money coming into bitcoin right now that it's absolutely gonna keep going up but there will be retractions so just remember those are buying opportunities not times to panic and sell when you do see those situations happen but bitcoin has got a steady trend and it's going like this more like this. But you guys get the point. Thank you so, so much for tuning in today. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time, guys.